Hey everyone, it's me, Nez. Um, I, I got my voice back. I'm still coughing, <clears throat> but I just thank God for his healing, and I thank you all for praying for me. Um, God is good, and I love you guys. <laughs> thank you for holding me down in prayer. Um, so I want to go to Luke, uh, read from Luke chapter 5. Let's start from verse 27. And after these things, he went forth. <coughs> sorry. He went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. <coughs> That's Jesus. And he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans or tax collectors and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples or they grumbled. Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered, uh, answered said unto them, or Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees? But thine eat and drink, <clears throat> like your disciples. They're eat, eating and drinking and making merry. What's up with that? And he said unto them, <clears throat> Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. Okay. So, he's, uh, Jesus is talking, well, the Pharisees uh, are <laughs> coming to Jesus and just complaining like they always do. They're always murmuring, they're always finding fault and nitpicking and, and doing all these things and to my in my mind I was like oh goodness they they are very religious they represent the religious folk in their day and I just kind of related to how you come across religious people and they're like why do you do this why do you do that and they always are pointing to oh you're not keeping the law you're not um doing this or that uh and so kind of like infringing or in is it impinging I forget but like encroaching on your freedom like kind of like uh overstepping their bounds um and 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 trying to steal your joy and 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 kind of accuse the freedom that you have in Christ like Christ is our meat our drink, our food, our bread of life, our living water, right? Our feast. <clears throat> and it's like religious people come, well, you're supposed to be fasting. We have Jesus. Like, I, and when I look at how can the children of the bride chamber fast when the bridegroom is with them, it's like our bridegroom, Jesus, is with us. His spirit is with us. Um... And yeah, fasting has its health benefits, but in my opinion, it's like, when I look at this verse, I'm like, there is, we are, we have the substance Christ. He is ever with us. He is our life. He is our everything. I think it, it's not for us to like deprive ourselves, but to fill ourselves with him. Um, that's what he would, he would want us to do. He is with us. He, he's like, is it right that the bridegroom, um, should the, the children of the bride chamber will fast when the bridegroom is with them? It's like, I am here and it is time for us to feast, feast on me. It is a time for you to be filled. It's time for you to be nourished. It is not time to be starving. And it's like religious people want you to starve. They want you to give, they want to give you things that do not satisfy, things that are shadows of, of, of the substance, like the law is a, sh is a shadow. And, and then it's like, we have the food, the feast is before you, why not eat it? Why must you starve yourself? Why must you 
um, re, you know, refrain or, or <clears throat> what is the word? Like deprive yourself of feasting and eating of Christ but in, in all his abundance. Why? And it's, that's just really the attack of the enemy where he wants to take the food out of the mouth of babes. The suckling, the milk, you know, you're supposed to feed on the milk, the sincere milk of the word, where you can grow thereby. You milk, meat, that is all Christ, right? The milk of the gospel, that simplicity of Christ, the devil wants to, and in, and, and, and in with religious people who come to you, they want to steal that to taint it, to poison that supply so that they'll, they'll give you they'll give you a false gospel, a false narrative, um, something that does not, will not help you to grow. In fact, it will keep you, it will subdue you under a bondage and enslave you and ensnare you. So, <clears throat> you know, the <clears throat> that's why the law is not... <laughs> It, it, it doesn't save. It does not justify. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> I just wanted to share that. That was very interesting when I thought about that. You know, we, right now, uh, there, before Christ, there was literally a famine. There was a famine. Uh, the, we didn't have, our solution, you know, God is our physician. We were all sick. Like he says, he doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't come to call the righteous or so-called righteous. They, you know, the Pharisees think they're righteous. Well, then Jesus ain't going, you know, then Jesus is not for you, but Jesus is for everybody. But if you want to say, okay, no, I am, I, I can keep the law and that, that would be accounting me for righteous. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the, um, he, I mean, let me, I love this verse. Uh, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the one that says to save the ungodly. I can find it, guys. I know I can't. <laughs> Uh, I think it's in Romans. Yes. Yep. So Romans 4 verse 5 where it says, But to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So Jesus is, is the person who, who justifies the ungodly. Um, he is the physician who heals the sick, right? And, and those who believe on him, that their faith in Christ is counted for righteousness. It's not by keeping the law. It's not by any of that. <clears throat> the physician, the physician he is for the sick. And sinners, we are sick in our sin, right? In the, this sin nature that we have inherited. And so our solution, our, our cure is Christ. And... <clears throat> So he is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's he is the only remedy, and it it's it's a disservice when people do not do not come to terms with what they have, <clears throat> that they are sick, and that they need a cure, that they are sinners that need a savior, that they cannot work to save themselves, that they cannot work for um for to please god they cannot work to to make themselves um how would how would i say to make to clean themselves up or to, it doesn't work that way they they cannot be seen other than what they truly are as an unbeliever as a sinner right the only way for that to be removed, purged, is in Christ. Is for Christ's righteousness to be imputed on their account. So that is the grace of God. We can only 
be saved by his grace through faith. <clears throat> it's not by works, lest any man should boast. Okay. And um, <clears throat> he's come to call the sinners to repentance to change their mind that you cannot help yourselves. The law cannot help you. The law is to show you that you need a savior, that you cannot clean yourself up, that you cannot keep it, that you are utterly sinful. And that should lead you to Christ. And now that you have Christ, it's not to go back to that famine of, of the law, of, of that, you know, we are now in Christ, so we should, we are filled, we are fed, he fills all in all, we, it is now time to partake in the feast that has set before us, this banquet, um, and he, and he truly wants to dine with us, and <clears throat> remember, he said to Peter, what did he want him to do? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. He didn't say starve my sheep, Peter. Starve my sheep. He said feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. It's not time to fast. Jesus wants you to be filled. You know, this is not a time to to be seeking things that do not satisfy or seeking things that point you to yourself like, oh, I, I can do this. No, Christ in me. Christ in me is the one who works through me, is the one I rely on. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. Um, yeah, so I that's just what I want to share with you guys. That was pretty cool. I was thinking about that. All right, I love you guys. You have a wonderful day. Bye. And just for clarification, this verse, it um, is saying, can you, 34, can you make, Jesus said to them, can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? So I know in parables, the, like the wedding guests, um, <clears throat> he's speaking about like Israel. Um, uh, because, I mean, he was sent to the, the children of Israel, right? That's who, I mean, Jesus was for everybody, but as a man um, physically... He was sent to the house of Israel and he was there. He is the bridegroom. So he's speaking about himself and the, those who are around them, around him are <clears throat> of that Israeli descent. Uh, and he's saying, oh, and the Pharisees were complaining. Uh, well, why are these people, why are you, why are they not fasting? Why are they eating? And you know, all that. So this is specifically for Israel, and you know the the part they play, you know that God's going to turn His eyes towards the nation Israel and to redeem them through the after the great tribulation and all of that. So they are actually the wedding guests. Now the bride of Christ, which was represented by the church, that's a whole different. That this verse doesn't pertain to us. I was just <clears throat> relating you know, some aspects to us. And, um, so, but this is not in reference. This is just for clarification. This does not refer, this verse is not referring to the bride of Christ. These are the wedding guests. These are the children of the bride chamber. So it did, cause if it's, if it meant the bride, it would say the bride. So this is not about the church. And so, but in the, you know, logically, if with Christ being there with them and saying, Oh, they should be eating. I mean, I'm, are, are my these guests to starve at a, the, um, when the bridegroom is with them? No. How much more if we are the bride? Are we to bride, as the bride to starve? Are we to starve um, at our own wedding? No, we're not going to starve. <laughs> we're going to throw the greatest reception and, and all of that, which <clears throat> prophetically is to come when with the nuptials and everything. But in essence, in, in, in spirit, we are one with Christ. And this is, I was just speaking spiritually about these, this, that we are filled, we are full, um, we are satisfied, we are feasting. This is as, as a bride, um, and the meal, our meal, our, our, our substance is Christ. And he is our, our satisfaction 
he is our nourishment. So just wanted to clarify that. And I think you guys understood. But for those who are like, no, even when he is, there's your answer. All right. Love y'all.